Jacob Posey Gloves here, and this is the 50th video in the Contact from the Ground Up tutorial series. Woo! And today, we're going to be talking about the something that's worth the number 50, the surround panner. This, this panner is like the boss of boss panners. Like, this, this is amazing that they have this in here. And I bet you, most of you that have contacts can't even use this option because it's so amazing that you just can't use it because you don't have a whole bunch of speakers set up correctly. So anyways, what what is the deal we've got going on here? Well, see, now the tricky thing about making a tutorial about this is I'm pretty much just going to have to explain what things do because you're not going to have... Unless you've got a surround sound room, you're not going to be able to experience it. But this allows you to do surround sound panning up to uh, 16 channels down here for like a theater or a cinema. So if you've got speakers underneath people's seats and speakers in the back and the front and all of 16 channels worth of speakers, you could send signal to each one of these speakers and then you could tell it how to behave in all these things. So I'm going to gloss over quite a bit. Now you'll notice I only have a stereo field set up right now. Uh, I actually have an 11.1 .1 system in my room itself, but I do not have it set up right now. So you could use anything with two speakers on a system like this, and they have different settings. And anything past two speakers will activate this output channel mismatch. So if you've got problems with not enough speakers, it'll mix it back into your original output. So I got anything past that. So I'm going to use the 5 Cinema. This is a typical room, so you could... If you got really creative, somehow uh, you could record your song, drop it into contact just to use the surround panner if you don't have a separate plugin for this. So anyways, cool, cool options, man. You can also bypass, and they do have presets here for you and presets and all that stuff. You can make your own. Okay, so we have our sound sources. This is one and two. These are our sounds, and where you place them in the field. So here we have our center speaker, our front left and right and back left and right or I think that's like uh, I don't know what the S stands for anyways you get the idea this is the center and where you move these so we could have the sound behind so the sound source is behind the speaker so it'll be softer if we move it in it'll get louder but also the panning will change so the sound will move between the speakers very much like a stereo field and this mouse mode affects how you're able to place these sources. Now, these sources, you can add more of them by just having more uh, output channels set up. So we could go to mono, and this places one and two on the same sound source. So when you move it around, it's just one and two. Sync, uh, pretty much identical. Uh, center, so this is what I had it on, so they will basically mirror each other. So you get the idea. You go through here and pick the one that you want. You could do... Ix offset or Y offset or independent, so individual. And you can actually automate these things around. I'm not really going to get into that just because it's kind of an advanced an advanced topic. So we're going to center mirror because I like that one the best because it's just fun to move around. Okay, so that's the uh, mouse mode. You have these algorithms. This has to do with how it interprets where your movement is. So if we move our sound sources around, like maybe a dinosaur is back here. And we put it in mono for this particular sound. And then we move it. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and then he's in front of you like, oh my gosh. Ah. And the way this algorithm would affect the volume level. So I have a choir loaded up. And you see as we move it around. You can see our channels behaving differently. Now if I, that's sinusoid. If I go to constant power. It'll try and keep a constant value going. Now keep in mind. I'm working in a stereo field right now, so I don't get the full effect of what's going on here. And logarithm is just another scale that interprets the distance between from any point to a speaker differently. Now, uh, I'm going to go to sinusoid, which is just a sine wave. And they have air absorption. What it is is the farther a sound gets away from a source, uh, it starts to lose high frequency content sort of like dampening just a high it's a really light high pass filter so that's what air absorption does delay effect as you move your sound uh there may be a delay reaching you and that's what this does the doppler effect is let's say you've got a plane and it's flying by and you hear the pitch go down and that's because it's moving far so fast away from you 
that the waves actually lengthen out before they hit your ear. So you perceive a longer pitch. So the Doppler effect, if we were to make this room very big, you can adjust that with the size parameter and move it around, you'll actually hear pitch movement. If we were to change the algorithm, actually that's yeah, pretty much fine right where it is. So you can hear it if you move really quickly, really rapidly. So that's what the Doppler effect is. And the same with the delay effect, because a delay obviously moving closer to you at a rate will sound, will cause the same thing. Now, it should also be noted that this is pretty much also the air absorption effect well. I believe it takes that into account. Then you have this options. Before we talk about options, we're going to talk about this LFE. So I was in a class and we were talking about low frequency uh, I believe this stands for effects. Anyways, it was a surround mixing thing we were talking about. And some people, when you go into the theaters, they have these things at the very front. And usually they're these big subwoofers. You see these big old honking speakers that they're the things that are responsible for the cinematic boom, you know, like the low end. And some, some mixing designers, uh, if you don't know, they... In movie theaters, they actually have theaters just for sound mixing. And they have these huge, enormous consoles. Because you got to mix in all your sound effects and stuff. There's like hundreds of these channels. And you got to use... Uh, so some people opt to use this. And basically, it sends the low-frequency stuff to the front of the speaker. So that when the boom, like the dinosaur's foot comes down, it's like really loud and boomy. Some people don't like that. They feel like it's a lie acoustically. Uh, but I think people go to the movies to experience lies, essentially. They don't want to live their life, at least usually. So uh, that's important that you know what that is, though. And this obviously affects the output there and not. But if we click on our options, you can select the number of inputs and outputs and change that. Actually, I think you have to change it over there, but it will display it. And then you can affect the amount these knobs take place. Uh, so you'll notice the amount that the air absorption, Doppler, all that stuff. You can take it up or down, you know, whatever floats your boat. So there's extensive mixing options. You also have your out routing options, uh, which we'll talk about. It'll open up this panel here. We're going to talk about this a little later when we get into the signal chain. Uh, but if we go to our options again, and we go to our LFE cutoff. So what it does is this uses a crossover. So I haven't really talked about crossover frequencies, but if you're using powered monitors and they've got um, horn monitors on top with bass monitors on the bottom, uh, you've got a crossover thing going on. So what does that mean? Well, it's taking part of your sound and sending it out the top end of your speaker to because that's the end of the speaker that's better with uh, treble frequencies. And then you have a bass speaker and it sends the bass down there. So what this will do is it'll take all your inputs and take everything at whatever range you say. So everything under 220 hertz will be sent to the uh, LFE channel. So just so you know, that is what that is. And yeah. So after that, we have a whole bunch of additional knobs here. And these are obviously our, they show us the inputs, how much sound is going to which speaker right here. And they're labeled nicely. So you have your output, just how much, you know, it's the same as every output you've seen. So if you reduce it, less can come into our effect. And if you increase it, more can come in. Divergence is important. Divergence, so if you have it down at zero, it will respond. It basically tells contact how important the sound source's location is according to the source. It should also be noted that when you have things like delay and Doppler effect on and air absorption, uh, this has to do with sound localization. So how accurately do you want the sound to sound like it's actually right there? Well, these things will increase the accuracy, but they'll also increase your computer's resources quite a bit. So you may not want these on unless you like, for whatever reason, have a great computer and can do that. So the divergence though also helps with that. It tells it, oh, 100%. So this location is very important. So it'll make changes a lot more compared to where this sound is and where it moves in the field. If we have it down to zero, it will essentially make no change volume wise, as you can see. But if we turn divergence up, we have a lot more variation according to what speaker it's moving near. Then you have size. So you may not want your size all the way up at 100%. This is a very large room, essentially. And if you take your size down, what's neat about that is you can have sounds in, but you can also place them past the speaker because this represents a sound source, right? So you can set it past the speaker. And I believe this was the left channel and the right input, respectively, from the output. But you can put them past, and that way you can have, like, footsteps come from behind and then get closer. So this also has to do with volume. So it'll be softer out here. 
And then we've already talked about the LFE, how much influence that has pretty much on your sound. And then we have these X shifts and Y shifts. They introduce a constant offset. So no matter where we move the two, the sound will be offset by this much. So that may or may not be important to you. Same for Y, um, as you can see. The angle is another offset and it shows you where the sound is here. So it'll offset your sound. So if it was supposed to sound like here, it'll move over here. You may have reasons for doing that. And then the distance, which is just, a, these are all offset. So you can get real particular about your offset settings. So maybe you've got your, you're writing your, um, well, that looks pretty cool. You're moving, you're automating these a particular way and you need this to happen. So I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I doubt a lot of you guys will use this, but if you want to go above and beyond on your mixing and you're using a lot of contact, this could be an option for you. There are various ways to um, automate these things, but I'm not going to cover any of them. If you want to know, drop a comment and I'll make a video, but I just don't think it's going to be used by anyone watching this series. But if someone in, out there does end up, I may make one, I may not, it just depends. So yeah, that's all there really is to the surround panel. As you can see, it's quite a powerful effect. I encourage you to set up a multi-speaker room and then just make a sound go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Maybe something whooshing around your room. Really cool. Fortunately, most people just don't have, they listen to it in stereo fields. So it's actually easier in some people's opinions to mix in surround because uh, you can have sound in just this speaker in this one while this area of your room is still open So you have a much wider field to play with versus stereo some people think is actually harder Because you only have two speakers to put all your sounds in so it's way a way tighter mix So this is actually really fun I totally encourage you again to set one up if you have a surround system set up You should subscribe because it's destiny if you have any questions about this again drop them in the comments and check out my music on composing gloves Dot com along with all the other great free fun stuff there and have a blessed day